Hi, I'm Don. Today, we're painting a big miniature. So, you want to paint a big miniature, but you don't have an airbrush. In this video, you'll see that I painted this miniature and turned it into this without an airbrush. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Painting a big miniature means you need a bigger brush. So, it's a matter of just using bigger brushes to paint bigger miniatures. Don't get me wrong, I love suck cut <laughs> or painting with the airbrush. But, I've been doing it for so many years. To be honest, I find it boring sometimes. In this video, you'll see that I finished the painting of this model without ever using an airbrush. Well, I actually use an airbrush for the value sketching, but you could use spray cans for those. Also, this painting is Golden Lemon Standard Painting, which is basically my fun way of calling display standard. I'm just shy to call my painting display standard, but the painting is definitely a bit more than tabletop standard. Painting with an airbrush is super efficient, but actually it's not. It, it kind of depends on the miniature. Like for this one, if we painted the red parts with an airbrush, we will have to mask off all of the white skin and the other parts of the model. And masking, regardless of the model, may it be gunpla or miniature, is never fun. There is a reason why painters who love using their airbrushes almost never shows the masking part. Masking with liquid mask, masking sole, or even tape can be very time-consuming and it's never fun. So painting with the airbrush can be faster and more efficient and in most cases it is but with certain models like this one, it is super not efficient. The airbrush can only be efficient if the miniature painting has one, two, or even more colors that are seamlessly like blending with each other like the unclean one or any organic monster for that matter but if it has a ton of details like this one the keeper of secrets the airbrush is no help of course you can still use the airbrush to add shading and post shading and glazing but where's the fun in that <laughs> I'm not hating on airbrushes, guys. It's just that it can be efficient, but sometimes you don't really need an airbrush. You see in the video, we're painting a ton of NMM, the gold NMM, and eventually later the steel NMM. And at the end of the video, you'll see the final output. It even has like sparkles and stuff. But I never used an airbrush. So it can be done. You could actually finish a model in good quality painting with good transitions, good shading, just with glazes and proper techniques. Also, I think I always say this in my videos. It doesn't really matter how you apply or how you paint the base colors. It's more of like the highlights and the recesses, the shades and shadows. Basically, the contrast and the color depth can be achieved via brush painting. So, and also, <laughs> my usual joke is that the highlight of any miniature painting are the highlights. During the second day of painting, my cuttlefish colors arrived. These paints are available at CreatureCaster.com. These are manufactured in the US by Cephalopod Studios. 
These paints are pre-glaze paints. So if you've been watching my videos for the past year, you know that even if I paint red model colors with Vallejos, I always add a bit of medium because I like building up colors with a bit more transparency. This is also the reason why I love inks and transparent paints. I had to set aside this model, this keeper of secrets, when these paints arrived though. I had to study the paints before resuming work on this model. These pre-glazed paints are perfect for finishing any model. You could paint with whatever paint brand that you have, but if you don't want to use an airbrush and you enjoy glazing, you could use these paints or simply add mediums to your paints and finish up your model. Glazing is the perfect like technique to substitute for the lack of airbrushing. However, it's important to note that I don't do I don't do those very thin down glazes, which is very time consuming. My thin down, I add transparency to my paints just a little bit and then I always blend the edges so that I don't produce coffee stains. So can you finish a model, a bigature, a big miniature model without using an airbrush? Of course you can. And can you push it to like golden lemon standard or better? Of course you can. Because the airbrush will just help you do more shading or paint the base colors and do post shading a bit faster if you don't need to do masking. But if you need to do a lot of masking, you're better off just paint brushing or painting with a brush from start to finish. So to produce good quality painting with a big miniature, of course you need to do proper glazing, proper blending, or even wet blending if you don't have an airbrush. But it, that's just part of like the normal painting process. And then after doing that, it's all about adding more recess painting, adding more shades, and of course, highlighting. If you are pushing for a display level painting of a big miniature, it is very important to add the same amount of textures and highlights and scratches and stuff to the big miniature. The same amount that you'll put on a smaller miniature. So it doesn't really matter if you paint with an airbrush or you just paint with a bigger paintbrush. The most important part is that you add textures and depth and contrast and highlights to the big miniatures the same way that you'll do with the smaller miniature. Which means painting a bigger miniature or a bigature is easy but just a little more time consuming. Now it's time to thank all my patrons, my bronze patrons, my silver patrons, and of course my higher tier patrons, my gold patrons, which are really awesome. And of course the higher tier patrons, which are my platinum tier patrons, and the crazy duo of Marco Colucci and Matt Adamo, which are my palladium tier patrons. Now it's time for the golden lemon reveal. So basically I shot the model over white background just to show the neutral like colors of the model. Notice the reflections on the bottom area of the sword and the reflections, the blue reflections from the top. Also I painted the base with a lot of pigments and inks and paint so I did not record that on film. I hope after watching this video, you're printing a really big 3D printed miniature or picking up your huge Warhammer miniatures even if you have yet to buy an airbrush. The long 30 minutes tutorial version of this video is now up at Patreon. That's it Pansit!